the Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage Show by Mark Helm. Nothing Mark shares with you guarantees your success in the self-storage business. This is for informational purposes only. There are no calls to action and nothing said or implied is a call for investment money into self-storage or any other asset class. You are responsible for your success in the self-storage business or any endeavor in life. Enjoy the show and here is Mark Helm. Let me tell you about one of the biggest mistakes I ever made in buying self-storage. My name is Mark Helm and I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage and I'm the creator of the Quick Start Academy. Quick Start Academy houses the training that I offer the small investor. You can find a lot of courses on there, both free and paid for. Go to creatingwealththroughselfstorage.com check out the store but i've made a lot of mistakes in my self-storage career we all do but perhaps one of the biggest i made was fairly early in my career when i bought a self-storage facility with another existing business in it i wrote about it in the book creating wealth through self-storage it was the case study in the back but let me go into a little more detail and many people in this community haven't read the book so let me share the mistakes that I made I bought an existing self-storage facility that had climate control non-climate control but the previous owner had taken some of the buildings and instead of building them out with self-storage, he put record storage business in there. Now I'm writing about this because I've seen a lot of people and work with a lot of people who are buying self-storage, but there's other businesses attached. Today, very often it's car washes or it's a retail building with a store in it and the owner owns a store. I've seen a number of scenarios. I've seen some record storage, but mostly today what I'm seeing are car washes. So let me tell you about my mistake. In short, I used the wrong valuation method to determine what that ancillary business was worth and how much I could pay for it. So in determining the value of a self-storage facility, very often what we do and what appraisers do is we approach self-storage as like real estate. That's how we value it. In other words, income producing real estate, we usually take the income approach to putting a value on it as opposed to houses which use comparable sales method in the self-storage business or really any income producing commercial real estate we take the income minus the operating expenses operating expenses don't include debt and capital improvements and the like but we take income minus operating expenses to come up with net operating income, NOI. And usually we apply a cap rate, whatever the prevailing capitalization rate is, to that income stream, that net operating income stream. If to you know, if it's 7% is the prevailing cap rate today, we take the NOI, net operating income, divide it by 0.07 that will give you a value of that will in essence give you what that income stream which you got to pay for that income stream to get a 7% return what I did with the record storage business was I did the same thing I took what the income was minus what it appeared the operating expenses were and applied the same cap rate that I was using for self storage mistake. All other businesses that aren't real estate are not valued the way that real estate's valued. Close, but different. So I'm not an expert on business valuation, but I've learned a lot since I made this mistake. My coaching is get with someone who understands how to value a business, give it your CPA or with a business broker or somebody who can coach you through the valuation. In essence, there's like three ways you look at it. What I do now is I look at it three different ways and kind of put them all together and make sure one of them is not totally out of whack. Probably the least important, but something I always do is what's called book value, which is what basically I take all the assets that that company has, everything it owns, its capital improvements, its equipment, its inventory, 
Add that up minus the liabilities it owes, and that gives me the book value of the business. Interesting, but I don't make an offer on it. In most businesses, what you get is the EBITDA, is what it's called, EBITDA. Now, what that stands for is earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation, and amortization earnings before interest, your loan, taxes, depreciation, amortization, similar to an NOI, but different. Basically, you take income minus operating expenses. In essence, there's some other things you can put in the operating expenses when analyzing a business we'll talk about in a minute, but you come up with that a number and depending on what the industry is and when in the economic cycle you're looking at it, what you do is you take that number, that E B I T D A number and you multiply times a multiple. So let's say the multiple is eight. So you take that number times eight. I usually get that number from a CPA or from a business broker or both and kind of compare them. The other thing you can do is take gross earnings times, let's say five, four. Again, I get that number from a business broker and a CPA kind of average the two if they're different, but I'll look at gross earnings times a number, which is usually lower. And then I take the EBITDA number times whatever they tell me, and it's usually a higher number. And they both should be, whatever the results are, should be within some, you know, close to each other. So if the gross earnings of a little business for 200,000 and let's say we use five that puts a million dollar value on it. If the net, the EBITDA number is 120,000 and let's say the multiple is eight, that puts a $960,000 value on it. So that tells me it's that business probably worth 950 to a million dollars. Something that's interesting with car washes is, and I've learned this and I've heard this from multiple car wash owners who are pretty astute, know multiple car washes. They'll take the value of an equipment package and let's say a car wash tunnel, because that has a limited lifespan. Let's say in a car wash tunnel, the equipment package costs $200,000. And let's say it has a 10 year average lifespan. What they'll do is they'll take that 200,000 divided by 10, 20,000. They'll take that $20,000 and add that is like an operating expense as they're coming up with a number they're going to use the multiple on. That way their equipment package replacement cost is covered in their operating expenses. I've heard multiple astute car wash owners tell me that's one of the things to do if you're looking at a car wash. Another big mistake I made was I assumed that my on the record storage business that my income was going to grow at the same rate that the previous owner's income had grown. So keep in mind, I closed on this project February 2008. Were you around in February 2008? That was the worst economic downturn we'd had since the depression in 2930 in the 30s. Now, what I did not take into account was that the business I was buying was a B2B business, business to business. We stored the records for businesses, lawyers, doctors, etc. Self storage is a B2C, business to consumer business. So, a B2B business, when an economic downturn hits, Man, that really affected my revenue for that record storage business dropped 20%. And my B 
B2C business, the self-storage business, my occupancy went down 8%, but I was able to manage some operating expenses. So my really, my, my net operating income went down some, but not a lot, especially compared to office, retail, even apartments in the uh, Great Recession. But that record storage business took a whopping hit. Something else I didn't really think through as I was buying that business. Now, we own that facility and record storage business for a number of years. Time can often fix many of the mistakes that we make as owners and developers. That project never hit my Performa numbers. The storage part did, but not the record storage part. But we ended up selling it a number of years later for profit, just wasn't what I projected. on. But I learned a real valuable lesson that I do not value ancillary businesses that come with self-storage if I'm looking at a project the same way. I would value self-storage. Don't make the mistake that I made. And I'm not saying don't buy record storage, and I'm not saying don't buy car washes. Just use the proper valuation method and get some good coaching on it. I can coach you on storage. I'm not the guy on the other ancillary businesses. I hope this helps that you're out there looking for your next self-storage opportunity. Good hunting. My name's Mark Helm. I'm the author of Creating Wealth Through Self-Storage, and I look forward to being with you next week.